So welcome to today's seminar. Uh, today's seminar is about the emerging uh, concept of machine on learning. And we have uh, Professor Mohan Kankahali here, and we are happy to have him uh, here. We are very thrilled that he accepted our uh, invite. And uh, Professor Kankahali is a provost Chair Professor of Computer Science at the National University of Singapore and the Deputy Execu Executive Chairman of AI Singapore. His research encompasses computer vision, multimedia computing, and information security and privacy. His contributions are in image and video understanding, data fusion, visual uh, saliency, as well as in content authentication and privacy. As director, uh, director of Encrypt. Uh, he leads initiatives on multimedia privacy and trustworthy machine learning. He is also engaged in leadership roles in multimedia computation, uh, such as being uh, the senior editor of ACM Transactions on Multimedia Computing Journal and the associate editor in chief of IEEE Multimedia Magazine. Mohan is a member of World Economic Forum's Global for, uh, Future Council on the Future of Artificial Intelligence, and he is also an IEEE Fellow. Um, so I should acknowledge the country. We acknowledge uh, the people of uh, Boi Warong and Boi Warong language groups of the Eastern Kulin Nation on whose um, uh, unceded lands we conduct the business of RMIT University and the lands that I am speaking from today. We respectfully acknowledge the First Nations people of the five Kulin Nations, their ancestors and elders, past, present and emerging. Our mighty also acknowledged uh, the traditional custodians and their ancestors of the land and waters across Australia where we conduct our business. Um, so I think now it's time for me to hand it over to Mohan. Uh, it's all yours, Mohan. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much for the kind introduction. So let me uh, start. Uh, sharing uh okay uh just give me a second yeah no worries take your time yeah yeah uh, I, i'm just getting the sharing right yeah i'm not sure which is uh, it should be located somewhere close to the red leave button yeah so i can get the share button but uh Okay, does this? Okay, uh, can you see my screen? Yes, we can see it. It's not in slide show mode, but we can see your slides. Yes. Okay. Uh, okay, so let me move to the slide mode. Uh, let me see. Is this okay now? Yes, perfect, man. Perfect. Okay. Uh, once again, uh, thank you very much uh, for inviting me today. And uh, I'm going to share you uh, some of our exciting work which we have done uh, basically over the last uh, two and a half years. And, uh, you know, I will going to be talk on this somewhat unusual uh, topic of machine unlearning. Uh, I think we are all very familiar with machine learning uh, and, and therefore, uh, this is a relatively new and emerging area. Uh, I, before I start, I would like to acknowledge my collaborators, uh, Professor Murari Mandal, who used to be my postdoc, but he's now an assistant professor at KIIT University in India. And uh, Ayush and Vikram were two undergraduate students who were interns uh, in my lab, and they started the work and then they graduated and they continued to work with us. And uh, this is really the joint work. And uh, Murari and Ayush and Vikram have been instrumental in many of the works uh, which I'm going to be presenting. OK, so this is uh, the outline of my talk. Uh, uh, basically, I have a lot to cover. Uh, and, and I hope that, uh, you know, uh, it can be interactive, uh, you know, feel free to interrupt me any point in time, or if you prefer uh, towards the end, uh, you know, we can discuss if you have any questions. So I would like to kind of give 
uh, a background and the motivation uh, for this area. And then I'm going to discuss uh, three of our works, uh, which uh, I'm going to present in some amount of detail. And in a way, I'll start with the simplest work first and then build upon that work moving on to the last work. And then finally, I will end with some discussion and conclusions. OK, now, um, you know, we all know uh, what is unlearning and unlearning is about forgetting things. And basically machine learning unlearning is forgetting specific things from a machine learning model. Uh, and why is this important? And, uh, and and one of the major reasons for this is a lot of the privacy regulations. So in GDPR and in uh, the California Consumer Privacy Act, uh, Canada's Act, uh, you know, many, many countries acts, uh, there is now a fundamental right, which is the right to be forgotten. Okay, now in the right to be forgotten, uh, basically a consumer has to give consent in order for his or her personal data uh, to be collected by a company or an organization. And this consent can be withdrawn at any point in time. And therefore, it is interesting what would happen when the consent is withdrawn. And we'll discuss more about that later. There is also this emerging area of, uh, of regulatable AI because there is uh, cross-border data control in AI because uh, there is data sovereignty that uh, data of a particular country has to reside on cloud and data centers of that particular country and it cannot be you know taken outside the control so there are many many such uh, motivations uh, for for machine and learning and i will get back to very specific uh, instances uh, which will hopefully convince you that this is an important problem so the idea here is uh, as seen on the top uh, this is your classical machine learning pipeline uh, for a classifier. So we have lots and lots of data. Uh, this is I'm talking about the top row. And then we have a, a model for which you do training. And uh, basically, this is some kind of a supervised learning. And you have this data with labels, and then you come up with the classes. And basically, you have a trained model after some time, you know, uh, using your favorite, you know, architecture, fav favorite training algorithm and uh, you get your output classifier. Now the machine unlearning does the opposite. It starts with the trained model, and then we want to apply an unlearning procedure such that it leads from a trained model to an unlearned model. And uh, we effectively what we do is, suppose we had many types of uh, labels which we could classify into say different types of animals or different types of categories of images but now we want to remove a certain category okay and again let me kind of motivate why we want to do that uh, so for example let's take a uh, face recognition uh, this thing so this is murari actually my collaborator uh, who who has been captured by certain face recognition model and now he is concerned about his privacy. So he says, I withdraw my consent. Please remove me from your model. In the previous days, if you ask that your data to be removed, it is just simple to remove it, that is delete from the database. But now with a spread of AI and machine learning, just deleting the data from the database is not good enough because that data could have been used to train a machine learning model. And when I withdraw consent about my data to be used, it is not just from the database, but also from all your trained machine learning models. So the idea is that the company then has to apply for its uh, model, some kind of a machine unlearning such that Murari is no longer uh, recognized. So if the Murari's image is given earlier on the top model, we could recognize Murari. But in the bottom model, after the unlearning, if you give a picture of Murari, uh, this, the, the model should not be able to recognize Murari, right? This is what we want. And it is not just about a particular individual or an instance, it could be a class. So for example, you have collected data of different age groups and uh, you know somebody can say that remove the data from a particular age group. Or it could be, for example, you are 
collecting data about different uh, periods of time. And maybe during the pandemic, the data was not very good because it is not a representative data. And I'll say that from my machine learning model, remove all the data corresponding to the pandemic period because I want to uh, you know, forget about this unusual period and, and train on the more normal period, right? So these are many, many such motivations, okay? So of course you would say that, okay, what's the big deal? If somebody wants their data to be forgotten, I take my training data, remove that data to be forgotten from the training data and just retrain the model without that particular persons or a particular groups or a particular time periods data. Well, if you think that is the solution, then I think I need to end my talk now. There's nothing more to discuss. That is a perfect solution uh, and, and uh, you know that will work. However, I would like to argue actually, uh, maybe that is not good enough. And uh, as I said, you may argue that why not just retrain the machine learning model for every deletion request? Well, one, machine learning has a carbon footprint. Every time you retrain using your GPUs and all that, you are actually uh, you know, using a lot of energy. And it is actually not necessary because machine unlearning can be a lot more efficient than completely retraining the model from scratch. Also, so, so I think there are multiple reasons for that. Uh, uh, retraining has a higher carbon footprint, is a higher cost in terms of GPU hours. And sometimes uh, the access to complete data is not possible. You may have collected the data over the years. Some of the data has been lost or has been archived and it is not easily accessible. And therefore, uh, I would like to kind of paint the big picture about uh, machine unlearning. I think there is a general area of responsible AI Within the area of responsible AI, there is a regulatable AI that is the part of AI which has to adhere to certain re uh, regulations. And the regulations are related to sometimes to make AI trustworthy, which is about privacy and explainability, fairness and robustness. And machine uh, unlearning is a small part of that. Okay, so let me give you kind of summarize the motivation for that. Basically, we want to do machine unlearning to keep up with the evolving data privacy regulation, the right to be forgotten. We want to remove data efficiently and effectively from a trained machine learning, often a deep learning model. As I said, why not retrain the model from scratch? Because it is inefficient use of resources, requires a lot of GPU hours impacting you know, uh, you know, carbon footprint, and it is cost inefficient. And more importantly, I would like to highlight this that there is actually applications beyond privacy in AI. Uh, so you want to remove out of date samples. You want to remove outliers. You have to remove poison samples. There is, there is machine learning poisoning uh, attacks. Or you want to remove uh, you know, noisy labels. Or you want to remove data which, has, which is biased, right? So there are many, many more motivations beyond privacy for doing machine unlearning. So, so I would then like to highlight that because of all these considerations, in fact, there is a growing interest in this area. Our group is one of the pioneering groups in this area, but there are other groups as well. And in fact, I would, I would, if you want to get a quick summary of what is going on in machine unlearning, there is a recent survey which appeared in ACM computing surveys on, on machine unlearning. And that is, a, that is not a bad place to start actually. That, that's a fairly good coverage of the existing works in this area. Though it does not cover some of the latest works. OK, so let me now kind of start uh, uh, with, with some of our work and I'll start with our simplest method, uh, which is the fast unlearning with anti sample generation. So here is our method. Uh, this appeared uh, as a journal paper uh, this year. Uh, uh, so, so basically, let's assume that on the leftmost source, you have a source machine learning model and then you basically want to have a certain data class to be forgotten. Say all the data corresponding to Murari's face, right? So we have two steps, of, uh, three steps in it. What we do is, first step is we generate what are known as anti-samples. Uh, so this is a trained uh, uh, 
uh, our original machine learning model where the weights are fixed. And we'll use this machine learning model to generate these noise samples. These noise samples are the anti-sample of the forget data class. So the idea is you had the training done on this data class and you want to forget it. So I want to create exactly the opposite data of this forget class so that I can actually impair the model. Then I will train this model with this noise data generated such that this machine learning model parameters will change in such a way that it will forget that forget class. Uh, unfortunately, when you do that, uh, it actually damages the model. So we need to do a little bit of a repair by using some of the retain uh, data uh, samples and then you get the unlearned model. So this is the basic uh, idea for it. So let me kind of give you detail. It's a very simple method, uh, very intuitive once I describe it. And uh, basically what you do is two steps, learn the error maximizing noise for unlearning, unlearn with that noise, and then do a little bit of a, uh, a repair uh, because of the damage caused by the unlearning. Okay, so here is the technique. This is the entire technique. So let's assume that you had a machine learning model which was trained on DC, which is the complete training data set, which consists of two partitions. R is the retained set. That means this is the machine learning, the new machine learning model which you want, which has to retain uh, data about these D, D sub R. And then there is the D sub F, which is the forget set. And we want to forget about this. So what we want to do is we want to use this machine learning model and generate this error maximizing anti-sample. So basically you generate by optimizing this equation, which is the loss function, the classification loss corresponding to the class to unlearn. And you add a regularizing term with the parameters of this noise, which is to be learned. So our method, which is called uncertain, uh, unlearning with a single pass uh, first learns this noise n by using this optimization function. And then what you do is once this noise is learned, you train this original machine learning model, which you want to forget a certain forget set with a set of retain, a subset of the retain. So dr sub is a subset of this retain uh, data set. N is this noise which we have generated using this optimization. So you do the impair of the model with just training with one epoch uh, with this data, uh, this thing, and then repair using just these retained samples, sometimes one epoch or maybe a couple of epochs sometimes. That's it. This is a very simple technique. And with this, what you can do is we can actually work very effectively. So, so I'm going to present some data. Uh, so so uh, there's a lot of data here, but I would like you to focus. So these are the two models, ResNet 18 and AICNN, which are the two methods we have used. YF is the number of unlearning classes. So it could be one class you want to forget, two class you want to forget, four class you want to forget, or seven classes you want to forget. ADR is the accuracy of the model for the retained set. So the original model, for example, has a 77.86% on ResNet 18 for the retained set, and for the forget set is 81%. Now, this retrain model is, is described below. The retrain model is the model that has been trained only on the retained data and has never seen the forget data. So it is often known as the gold standard model. The retrain mo retrain model is also known as the gold standard model because this model has never seen the forgot the forget data, which means this is the perfect model. So definitely for this, the accuracy for the forget set is zero because it has never seen it, and the retain set is 78%. And our method, actually, if you see on this column, the, the bold column, the 71% for the retain set and zero for the forget set. Okay. And similarly for so on. So it actually performs very well. Uh, it is just one epoch of retraining and one epoch of repair, and it performs almost as good as the gold standard model. And uh, the rerun time is, is basically you want to see 
how much time does it take to retrain the model on the forget set? Because we want to check whether it has truly forgotten the data or not. So if it requires, uh, for the retrain model, it requires 77 epochs to regain on the forgotten data set. Uh, for us, it takes 90. So uh, in fact, so it's a pretty good forgetting and so on for the other, other data. Uh, there is one before our method, the best method was the Fisher forgetting. And in fact, we do much better than Fisher forgetting in terms of the retain set accuracy. So the, the Fisher forgetting was very good at forgetting uh, uh, accuracy, which was zero, but ours is also zero for the forgetting. But for the retain set, uh, uh, Fisher forgetting only did 10.85%, uh, but we do 71.6%. Uh, and 73% uh, compared to 81 and 91 uh, for, for the initial original model. So this is pretty good for getting. Of course, I will not say we are perfect because if it's perfect, we would actually get back 81 and 91%. So actually there's still scope for improvement. Uh, again, our method is a fairly general method. It can be used uh, for a variety of different data sets and a variety of architecture. So here we show a comparison for the ResNet uh, 18 architecture and uh, the Vision Transformer architecture. Again, if you see for, uh, this is for the VGG phase 100 data set, uh, and these are the number of forget classes. Uh, for the forget uh, set for the gold standard model, it is zero, ours is about 3% or 8% depending on the different model. And our retain accuracy is uh, up, up to from 72% to 87%, while the gold model is from 80% to 93%. Uh, you know, unlearning facial data is challenging and there is of course scope for improvement, but we do pretty good. Uh, for CIFAR 100, again, our performance uh, is, is, is good but it is not as good as the original uh, you know, retrained model. Uh, but uh, again, as I said, there is scope for improvement. So we range from 75 to 68%, while the original can go from 78 to 79%. And our forget accuracy ranges from zero to 1.0%, while the retrained model is 0%. Okay, that's pretty good for a, such a simple method. Again, uh, we did an ablation study. Uh, how many repairs, how many uh, impair step and how many repair step. Uh, if you just do one impair step and one repair step, it is actually pretty good. Uh, it's 80% uh, accuracy on, uh, on retain set and 2% on retain set. But if you do two uh, times impair repair cycles, then uh, our uh, uh, actually uh, the forget set accuracy drops to zero and uh, the retain set accuracy actually improves uh, to actually uh, uh, you know 70% okay so so it's 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 pretty decent as i said it is good but it is not perfect we also did a ablation study on the learning rate so as we uh, vary the learning rate uh, from 1 uh, to 0.001 percent, actually you get uh, different performance. So we have found that a learning rate for different architectures for different data set, somewhere around 0.01 percent uh, learning rate, uh, actually uh, is a good trade-off uh, between uh, the amount of time required for uh, doing machine learning and uh, the forget set accuracy and the retain set accuracy uh, we can get. Uh, again, we 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 uh, remember we had a regularization term with a lambda. Again, we vary this lambda term, and uh, again we get a sweet spot somewhere between 0 0.01 uh, lambda to 0.01 percent lambda. Uh, finally, we also do the uh, ablation study with how many samples do we want to retain. So if we do one percent of the remember after we do the machine earlier learning with the noise. We need to uh, repair the damage. If we use only uh, on this right hand side uh, table, if we use only 1% of the original uh, retained data, uh, actually we get a uh, decent uh, uh, performance of the repair, 34%. But if we get about 10%, we get 64% of the accuracy. Of course, if we use 60% of the data, we get 74. 
the more retained data we use to retrain uh, in the repair step, of course, the better is the accuracy. But we want to get somewhere uh, decent, and we find that 10% actually is good enough. Uh, again, we do a comparison of the layer-wise uh, weight distance of the unlearned model, the retrained model, which is the gold standard model, and our model. It is actually uh, kind of comparable. Uh, more or less, our uh, weight distance is more or less similar uh, uh, of the retrained model with respect to the original model and our model with respect to the original model. So one interesting question is, uh, is the gold standard model, remember the gold standard model, the gold standard model is the model, the original model trained without using the forget uh, data. Is this the best unlearned model? Actually, surprisingly, we found that that is not so. Uh, we did an experiment uh, empirically. We found that the distance of the original model to the proposed model versus uh, distance to the original model with the retrained model. Uh, actually, our distance is quite far away from the retrained model, but still the performance is as good as the retrained model, which means that in the learning manifold, the, the gold standard model is one place where the forget set accuracy is zero and the retain set accuracy is is quite high but there could be other places in in the in the whole entire space of models where the forget set accuracy could be zero and the retain set accuracy could be as high as the original model so this is an interesting observation of course we don't have a theoretical proof for that that our unlearned model is not close to the retrained model in the parameter space, but the performance is still good, which which uh, gives the rise to the possibility that there could be multiple actually gold standard models in the parameter space. Again, uh, we did uh, a prediction of of uh, suppose you take this original machine learning model, and then you do unlearning on the machine learning model. And now if you give the, the forget class to this machine, un, machine unlearned uh, model, what will it predict? So for example, you ask it to forget cat, okay? And then if you give a cat picture, what should it predict? Our hypothesis is that it should predict the other classes randomly. So if you give it a cat, it should say it's a dog, it is an aeroplane, it is a fish, or it is a tree. Because if you give it, if you take a machine learning model, you make it forget cat. But every time if you give it a cat and it says it's a dog, very consistently, then it is not really forgotten. Basically what you've done, you have substituted the label from cat to the dog, but you have not really forgotten the cat class. So if you have truly forgotten, then it should randomly predict the other classes, okay? And therefore, this is this uh, slide shows that indeed our uh, uh, unlearned model actually predicts many of the other classes with non-zero probability. But of course, in an ideal world, it should predict all the other classes with uniform probability. We are not able to achieve that yet. But that is reasonable because, no, you know, uh, a, a, a cat could be more closer to a tiger than to an aeroplane, right? So uh, maybe uniform is not what you want. Maybe you want to get a much more reasonable distribution. Okay, and this again uh, shows uh, the distribution of the of the prediction of the of the retrained model versus the proposed method, and we pretty much do as well as the re, as the gold standard model. Okay, now this was uh, a test which we did. That's the network really forget. So this on the top row is the original input. Uh, the original model, uh, we did a GradCam visualization of the second last layer, and this shows the attention map. Uh, basically, it focuses on, the, on, the, on the, the key object there. And then for the unlearned object, you can see that it does not, the, the second last layer does not focus on anything, which means that it gives some evidence that the model has actually forgotten uh, that original class. And uh, we then also do sequential learning. That means we learn uh, a class, we forget class zero, then class one and class two, and our uh, method still uh, retains the retained class accuracy quite well. So sequential learn unlearning is not a problem. 
Okay, and the efficiency we compare the time comparison between retraining, fissure forgetting, and our method. And our method is 154 times faster than retraining, and uh, almost 2,000 times faster than the fission and learning, which was the best earlier method compared to ours. Okay, so uh, for this first method, my key takeaway is. Fast unlearning is definitely possible in deep learning models in a variety of architecture. And actually, we don't need an access to the forget set. We can actually generate noise in order to do that. And no prior knowledge is required of optimization method. And it's a very simple method. Of course, uh, there are some limitations. It works only for class level unlearning, doesn't work for random data samples or an instance learning, uh, unlearning or a cohort unlearning. And again, uh, we have a lot of empirical results but we have no theoretical bounds on the extent of information remaining after the unlearning. And but in my opinion, these are open problems. OK, with this, uh, which was the first simplest method, I will go to the second method, which is slightly more complicated. OK, which is zero shot machine unlearning. OK, so let me introduce the problem. Uh, we were actually we asked the question, is it possible to achieve unlearning with zero training samples? Remember, in the previous case, we required some of the original retained data samples to do the repair step. But what if if you don't have access to any data, either the forget data or the retained data? Can you still do machine unlearning? So so we introduced this problem as zero shot machine learning and you would wonder that who needs this? Is this really required? Are you just making up a problem? Well, uh, we can think of many situations where zero shot machine unlearning is required. Maybe uh, machine unlearning has got data from various sources and later on the data is no longer available. It was in a public data uh, repository. Now that public repository is not available or there was some uh, buyer you bought the data from and now the data is not available. That was for only for training and you have no longer access to the data or the data consent has completely been withdrawn from by all the owners say this is could be medical records or you have limited duration to access to certain data sets. So for example, tax data, you build your machine learning model on a tax data which your tax authority gives you limited access, but then you don't have access to that anymore or it is on the fly online machine learning where you get streaming data, but you don't store that streaming data and you still want to do machine unlearning. So there are many situations where you need zero shot machine unlearning. OK, so we propose two solutions for that. The first one is intuitive, uh, which is the error minimization, maximization noise, but unfortunately it doesn't work. But that inspired us to do the second one, which is the gated knowledge transfer. So let me introduce this method. Uh, Basically, uh, the method is related to the previous method, the fast unlearning. So remember, in the previous method, we we did a noise sample generation using this optimization for the forget class. So we want to extend this to a data uh, setting. How? Basically, what I do is I use an error maximization noise to generate the noise sample for the forget class. And I do the exactly the same thing for the retain class. I don't have the retain class, but now I generate error minimizing noise. Error minimizing noise presumably therefore is samples which corresponding to the retain set because for the classifier, this has minimum noise, which means it is like a retained data sample. So what I can do is I can generate noise based for the forget class by doing error maximization and I do uh, noise samples with error minimization, which corresponds to the retained data. So if I do this, so I have a trained model. I start with uh, uh, generation for the, the noise for the forget set, then uh, the second noise for the retained set, then use this forget noise and the uh, retained noise and do my previous method of impair and repair. So I impair using the noise of the forget set and I do repair with the noise of the repair set. OK, so this is a simple extension of the previous method, which I call it the error minimization maximization noise method. And, and this is simple. Again, I have a, a, a step where I do forget data anti sample generation, then retain data sample generation using error minimization. So did anti sample was using a, a error ma maximization and then I do this impair repair model uh, unlearning uh, in the last step. 
what we found is we did this method. We thought we were very clever. Uh, the intuition was right, but unfortunately the performance was poor. But what it did, did was it was inspired us to come up with a better solution which uses a combination of knowledge distillation and a generator. So let me explain this method now. Uh, in this method, uh, what we do is we have a teacher, which is the original machine learning model, and we have a student model, which is the machine unlearned model. That means this is like the teacher model, but it has forgotten about a certain class of data or a certain uh, type of data. OK, and how do we do that? We do that by making the student learn from a generator which produces pseudo data points XP for a noise vector. OK, so 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 this exactly is the architecture. So this T is the original teacher trained model. This is. Absolutely your original model. Now you want to come up with a new machine learning model. So what we do is we start with a student model, which is exactly the same architecture as the student uh, as the teacher model, the student model, but the all the parameters are randomly initialized. OK, then what I do is I start a gated knowledge transfer process. What do I do is the following. I take the teacher and and what I do is I generate random samples using this generator. If the random sample corresponds to the retain set, then I I tell the student model to learn from the teacher model. However, if this generated sample is. Corresponds to the forget set then I don't pass this information to the student model because the teacher model can correctly classify the forget set, but I don't want the student model to learn that. So what I do is I put a gate here, which is like a bandpass filter, which stops such samples from passing to the student. And by doing this kind of a training process, now traditionally the teacher student knowledge distillation is used to come up with a smaller model which effectively is like the teacher model with lesser number of parameters. So that is to make the models more efficient. But our purpose is not to make the model efficient. So we use the same architecture as the teacher model, but we make the student model forget about the forget class data. OK, so the purpose is different. The method is similar. OK, so basically the generator produces pseudo data points for noise vector and the corresponding teacher's prediction be XP and the generator maximizes the KL divergence. So it creates new samples uh, by uh, maximizing the KL divergence between XP and the teacher and the student. OK, and then what we do is we do the weight update of the student for the weight update of the student. We actually use a, a, a zero shot knowledge transfer, a knowledge distribution method uh, the reference is given below, so we use an attention mechanism provided. So this attention mechanism is we are using from this uh, method, uh, which uh, I don't have the time to explain. Basically, we do a layer by layer attention uh, and use that to transfer for the retain set uh, the the knowledge from the teacher to the student uh, using this particular loss function. OK, uh, and 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 then the generator and the student are basically updated alternatively and and with a with a big difference that we actually have a, a gate here and what does the gate do as i said the generator generates sample randomly which is which basically it tries to sample the entire input data space if that data space corresponds to the retain set yes do the knowledge transfer from the teacher to the student However, if the generator generates a sample corresponding to forget set, then block this knowledge transfer from the teacher to the student. So we need a gate which understands that this sample belongs to the forget set. How do we do that? We do it uh, by using a bandpass filter. 
to restrict the generator from passing the information from the forget class we place a filter which receives all the samples and filters them out by before passing to the student so the filter criterion is very simple if the if the prediction class of the the forget class is very high where epsilon is the hyperparameter then you block this particular sample right because this belongs to the forget class which means this student uh, uh, should not learn about this forget class because the because the teacher can predict this forget class with a high accuracy and therefore block this by using this now we can use a gated uh, uh, knowledge transfer algorithm where uh, this is the top part is the generator which keeps generating the sample it want to sample the input space and then uh, this is uh, the gated transfer by uh, applying the transfer you do the student uh, uh, transfer in the second one okay so this is the exact gated knowledge transfer algorithm for knowledge distillation again uh, uh, we want to do uh, 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 evaluation but we actually come up with a new uh, metric called the anamnesis index uh, basically what we found is the retrain accuracy so the idea one of the uh, uh, training uh, uh, evaluation metrics was for the forget class how long does it take for the unlearned model to to relearn this forget class but we found that that is not a very accurate uh, measure so what we wanted to do is so so what, because what happens is the convergence of this forget class accuracy to the original model uh, can be very fast or very slow so but it is not a, a, a indicator of the quality of the unlearning so what we came up with a new index which uh, basically is an anamnesis index which says is how how fast is to reach to the original forget set within alpha percentage accuracy and the idea is this uh, range varies from 0 to infinity and a uh, better the model actually the value is 1 okay uh, so so basically we we did our uh, training uh, on this method the mm method was our original uh, error maximization minimization maximization method uh that is not as great a method for some of the things you will see and the gkt is the gated knowledge transfer method and for which uh, uh uh you can see the mm method the retain set accuracy is not that good uh while the forget set accuracy is also not that good but for the gkt method the forget set accuracy is close to the gold standard model method the retrain model and the uh, the retain set accuracy is also pretty good and this ain uh, uh, is is decent uh, uh, also because it is closer to one compared to the uh, error minimization maximization approach again we did a single class uh, learning on lenet and resnet again uh, the performance is actually pretty good uh, i'm uh, we compared to uh, uh, actually the state of the art non zero shot and learning methods uh while the performance uh, is not as good as non zero shot but i would say for a zero shot method it is pretty decent performance uh not as good as uh, for example here we get 81% as the best but for uh uh it's 83% for uh, non zero shot and here uh, for two class and learning we are 81% but it's 84% for uh non zero shot so it's pretty decent but not perfect okay uh, so zero shot actually performs quite decently and again we did ablation study uh, for what is the threshold for the burnt pass filter we found that the threshold value greater than 0.1 uh, actually works quite well okay uh, anything uh, higher than that does not work very well uh, changing the loss function again we found that uh, uh, you know using uh jensen shannon divergence uh is 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 does not make too much of a difference uh but changing the loss function actually makes a difference uh finally we do sequential uh, unlearning that means we learn forget class 0 first then class 1 then class 2 then class 3 then class 4 uh actually the the performance is pretty decent till class uh, you know forgetting four class but then the 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 
forget set uh, accuracy actually is not zero it 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 increases so the lesson is after a few sequences of unlearning you may want to retrain the model or you can come up with a better unlearning method okay so the summary of the sex and method method is actually we have a reasonable method using gated knowledge transfer to do zero shot machine unlearning it is not quite uh, as good as uh, the non zero shot method but it is pretty decent uh it is not yet scalable to large models and large data set it works for small models and small data set and it supports only class level unlearning forgetting a random cohort is not possible okay which brings us to our third method which i'm going to describe which is unlearning with a competent teacher so this method actually uh basically uh, is a more general method and this is the be our best method so far and this uh, is basically uses a bad teacher and a good teacher okay so this this appeared in triple ai uh, earlier this year okay so what do we do so in this method we use two teachers so so we have two teachers so let me uh, give the statement a competent teacher which is the good teacher is the original model this is the original model the competent teacher which uh, was fully trained on the retain set and the forget set we now want to do machine learning which means we want to come up with a new machine learning model which has forgotten about the forget data and that is the student model so this is the student model we will teach how we will teach we will teach from the competent teacher which is the original model for the retained data so it learns about the retained data from the original model which is the competent teacher but we also have a bad teacher or a dumb teacher or an incompetent teacher what we do is we 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 actually use the same architecture as the comp incompetent teacher but we just randomly initialize all the weights that means the output prediction of this incompetent teacher is actually rubbish it gives rubbish for forget set as well as it gives rubbish for the retain set but what we do is we use this bad teacher to train the student for the forget set so that is basically the key idea the competent teacher is the fully trained or the original model incompetent teacher is a randomly initialized model and the student is initialized uh, 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 with with the complete data so we start the student model as with the fully trained model and then we start teaching it using the competent teacher and the incompetent teacher such that it retains the original retained data but forgets the forget data set okay so what we do is uh basically there is a there is a kl divergence between uh this uh incompetent teacher and the student and there is a kl divergence between the competent uh, teacher and the student right so so what we do is we want to retain so our unlearning objective is we retain whatever we learn about the retain set from the competent teacher and we forget about that means we minimize the kl divergence with the dumb teacher which means we forget the data about the forget class okay so the key intuition is we start with the original model as the student model and we selectively remove the information about the forget samples from this model so selectively transfer bad knowledge about forget data from the incompetent teacher by minimizing the kl divergence between the incompetent teacher and the student and similarly the correct knowledge from the competent teacher is fed from the competent teacher by minimizing the kl divergence between the smart teacher and the student okay so this is the basic idea and uh, again that uh, we do on uh, all the various machine we evaluate on the various machine learning uh, uh, metrics and we actually introduce a new uh, machine learning metric called the zrf which is the zero retrained forgetting metric so the idea is uh 
this is a all the previous metrics require us to have the gold model and we wanted to basically come up with a new uh, retraining metric where you don't have the gold model that means you don't have the original data to train the gold model so what we do is we take the unlearned model m and the incompetent teacher d and we take the 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 js divergence between that and that is uh, the retrain uh, metric. Uh, so the idea is the ZRF value. So so let's assume that uh, we have a class called fish and we have a subclasses called aquarium fish, flat fish, uh, ray, shark, trout, different kind. And the ZRF uh, as one means that it is completely random for the forget sample, which means that it has poor generalization. Uh, for example, if I say the original machine learning knew about fish, it knew about the aquarium fish, it uh, knew about the flat fish, it knew about the ray, it knew about the shark, it knew about the trout. Now let's assume I say that it forget a particular class, say forget flat fish. Then ideally, if you give a flight flat fish image, it should not say it is a flat fish. It should say it is either an aquarium fish or it is a shark, it is a trout because it is fish like, but we don't know which fish. OK, so if it then if it does random, then it is good, uh, but then it should not be random. To any subclass, any class, it should not. For example, if you forget fat flesh and if you give a fat flesh, it should not say it is a car. That means the generalization of this model is poor then. It should be to any of the other subclasses. And and therefore, uh, but then it should also not uh, consistently be incorrect. That means not truly forget. So the ideal value of the, Z, uh, the ZRF is that of the ZRF of the original model on the test data set. OK, so that is the, the new uh, metric we have measured. And then we did experiments with a variety of uh, data sets on a variety of models. And basically uh, what we did is we, we did an, uh, uh, you know, uh, a lot of tests. Uh, one increasing, uh, one interesting uh, uh, observation we had was unlearning a specific class or a data set leads to decrease in accuracy on the forget set. But when the retained set contains data points which are similar because they could be subclasses of the forget sample, then it may or may not uh, decrease. So, so this uh, point is a very surprising observation we have found. Uh, from our experiments. Again, for the class unlearning, our method actually performs quite well compared to the fast uh, untraining method. Uh, we, we do uh, a pretty good uh, on, on the retain set accuracy and, and uh, poorly on, on, on the forget set uh, accurate uh, on the forget set as we expect. OK, and for the class unlearning with super class subclass again, uh, for example, there's a vehicle subclass and we want to forget the rocket class. Again, our method does quite well and the ZRF is actually quite uh, good as compared to the retrained model. OK, uh, again, uh, we do sample unlearning. Uh, again, if we can unlearn 50 samples, 100 samples and 150 samples, our, our method does quite well. OK, uh, again, we did uh, sample unlearning uh, on different architectures. Uh, again, the performance actually uh, is is quite good. Uh, uh, again, I, I don't have the time to go into the details. I know I'm kind of running out of time. Uh, uh, again, we did uh, some interesting experiment for the incompetent teacher. I said basically take the same model as the original model. Just do random initialization of the parameters. But what if we use a much smaller model? Can we replace the incompetent model with a smaller model? So we did actually using a lightweight neural network and a random prediction generator. And actually we found that our method works equally well. So we don't have to use a full fledged model as an incompetent teacher. We can do a small model as an incompetent teacher, which basically just uh, it's like a generator which outputs rubbish and it's a good way to reduce the cost of machine and learning. OK. Uh, what we found is uh, instead of using uh, 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 
a fully uh, random model as an incompetent teacher. We use a partially retrained model as an incompetent teacher, and that actually works quite well as well. Uh, the performance is is much better, in fact, in that case. Uh, and and we find that uh, using uh, our method is actually quite fast, 70 times faster than uh, you know completely unlearning uh, from scratch. So overall, our method is much faster, and retain set accuracy is quite good, and the forget set uh, accuracy is quite poor, as is to be expected. OK, and we can do sequential unlearning quite well as well. OK, so what are the key uh, takeaways? So we have a novel and generalized teacher student framework. What is good about this? We can do a class unlearning. We can do cohort unlearning and we can do sample unlearning, which means that you can do a particular instance of our data to be forgotten. You can guarantee the forgetting about that. What is not so good about it is we have a lot of empirical results, but we don't have efficiency or privacy guarantees. We the theoretical uh, analysis is lacking and we still need better evaluation uh, measures. OK, so so this kind of is the, the end of my third method and I will move to the last part of my talk, which is some discussion and conclusions. In fact, I hope I have convinced you that uh, machine unlearning is an interesting problem uh, which which is actually required uh, for for uh, uh, based on some of our privacy regulations and some of the other applications uh, which are required. In fact, what we have done is I did not have the time to present is our latest work which we presented at ICML last month in Hawaii was deep regression unlearning. So all the three methods I presented right now were about uh, classifications, about uh, classification problems of machine learning. But you know there is a whole work on regression unlearning, right? We want to do especially prediction models for finance, for uh, medical. Uh, basically, you are doing regression by doing predictions for predictive models. Can we do unlearning uh, when I want to forget a sample or a class or a su subset of the data? Can I do uh, regression, deep regression unlearning? And we have actually come up with uh, two methods called the blind unspot unlearning and the Gaussian amnesiac unlearning. I don't have the time to, uh, to get into that, uh, but if you are interested, you can look into our paper. In fact, uh, our... Uh, Unlearning uh, need not be restricted to uh, uh, to regression only. In fact, there is a whole wide world waiting to be explored. Uh, uh, before I get into that, uh, uh, you wonder which method. So I, I presented three methods: the fast, uh, you know, machine unlearning, the first one, then the zero-shot machine unlearning, the second method, and the back teacher method, which is the third method. So which method to use where? So if it is class level unlearning, actually you could use any three uh, of the methods, depending on uh, the application and the kind of uh, retain set accuracy you want and the forget set accuracy uh, you want. Uh, clearly, the fast method is fast, but the performance is uh, not as good as the third method. Zero shot is good if you don't have any data about uh, uh, you know uh, the retain set or the uh, forget set. Back teacher gives the best performance, uh, and and it is quite fast as well. Uh, but if you want to do a random sample unlearning, not a class unlearning, then unfortunately the first two methods don't work. Only the back teacher, the third method which I presented works. So this is for the classification problem. For the regression unlearning, to uh, actually ours is the first method. Uh, in the world. Uh, there is no other method and our method actually is not that good. So there is a lot of scope for improvement out there. OK, in fact, there is a lot of other types of unlearning. Uh, a lot of data in the world is in form of graph, for example, so social network. So if I am a Facebook uh, or an Instagram or a TikTok subscriber and I go and tell my platform company, forget me, I want to unsubscribe then they have to do machine unlearning for the recommendation system. So graph unlearning is turning out to be an important problem in this setting. Uh, then, of course, there is the federated unlearning. Uh, when there is federated learning where uh, data is not shared, there are multiple nodes. Can we do federated unlearning also when there is federated machine learning? 
uh, then of course the, for unsupervised learning, can we do unsupervised unlearning as well? Again, uh, uh, to the best of my knowledge, there is no such method uh, available as of now. Very important now that with uh, uh, foundation models, large language models, with diffusion models, uh, can we have uh, foundation models unlearning? And in general, machine unlearning for regulatable AI systems is going to be a very important topic as, as time comes by because many of the, of the regulatory agencies from the AI ethics and responsible AI perspective are demanding that companies, organizations have to respect if somebody wants their data to be forgotten or their data to be removed, the data has to be removed not only from the database, but also from any of the AI models which the organization uses. Okay. So in summary, unlearning can be difficult in machine learning. It is even more difficult to do unlearning in deep learning models. Depending on the machine learning model, the unlearning technique may vary. Uh, unfortunately, there is no one universal method for all types of uh, machine learning models. And in my opinion, uh, uh, the biggest uh, drawback of today's machine unlearning uh, is that uh, including ours is we have a lot of empirical methods, but we don't have any theoretical bounds. We have no guarantees. We, we cannot talk about anything rigorously. OK, uh, and, and there is a lot of scope uh, in this area. Also, uh, from the security perspective, when I say I've done unlearning and I've done some testing, have I done rigorous testing? I think in the security community, uh, one needs to do uh, uh, an adversarial attack uh, from unlearning perspective. There is some membership inference attack which is being done, but again, uh, no rigorous unlearning attacks have been formulated for machine unlearning. And I think for the security community, I think there is a big opportunity out here. And in my opinion, uh, therefore, a lot of work is to be done as machine learning models get widely deployed, I think the need for machine unlearning will improve uh, with time. And therefore, I think there's a lot, lot to be done in this area. And in fact, if you want to start, all of our work, actually, uh, we our code is available, our paper is available, the data is available. So it could be a good place uh, to start uh, with our work. And hopefully, uh, you, can, you can contribute to this uh, uh, important problem and join the community and build upon the work which we have done. And as I said, ours is one of the first works and they can be improved upon it. With this, I would like to end my talk and I'm happy to take any questions. Thank you very much, Mohan, for the very interesting talk, very informative and for the insights for the future research. Uh, so I would like to ask the audience if they have questions, you can if you have questions, you can raise your hand and ask your question by muting yourself. Or if you want, you can type your question in the chat. There is one question in the chat. Uh, can I say that the membership inference attack can be considered the dual problem of the machine learning? Uh, yes, yes. So I think the machine learning uh, uh, has this uh, issue. Uh, in fact, the membership inference attack on deep learning was done by my colleague here at NUS by Reza Shokri, actually. And Reza showed that for a machine learning model, uh, if you have a carefully crafted uh, attack, you can actually know what was the data it was trained on. And, and, and thus, you can, you can leak uh, the data. And, uh, and, and, and therefore, uh, when I do machine unlearning, and I say that I've forgotten the data, then machine, uh, 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 you know, membership inference is one of the ways of testing whether I've actually forgotten the data or not. Because if I can still uh, infer the forgotten data from the unlearned model, that means I have not really forgotten. Maybe I've just forgotten in the last few layers of the model, but deep inside the parameters of the model, the, the information about the original training of the forget data is still there. So yes, I agree. Uh, it is it is a good attack, and in fact, uh, in all of our papers, we actually do the membership inference attack as well. Uh, great, thank you. Um, Maggie from the audience has raised her hand. Maggie, please go ahead. 
Yeah, uh, thanks, Professor Mohan. Thanks for your very interesting talk. And uh, I agree with you that machine learning is so important and meaningful uh, in this era of AI. So my, uh, I actually have several questions. So uh, I'm a, a lecturer in cybersecurity, uh, mainly focused on the privacy preserving machine learning. And my research is actually using some uh, applied cryptographic uh, approaches for the privacy preserving machine learning. So my question uh, regarding the machine and learning is actually uh, my first question is that so uh, you mentioned that uh, when we so in your second approach for machine and learning you mentioned that sometimes the users they want to just like the uh, machine learning model to learn unlearn their data sample because of some privacy issues. So my question is that after the unlearn uh, after the unlearning procedure, so how can we uh, how can we prove to the user that we indeed learn their data sample? I think great question. And I think uh, one uh, obviously is is uh, to to check the accuracy of the model on on this forget class on that person there. So you give the data again and whether it infers or not. But 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 that is not good enough as you as i said uh, membership inference attack is one which is a stronger attack than than just looking at the forget set accuracy and uh, and and frankly i think uh, there could be other attacks i don't know of and therefore i think uh, this is for the security community to 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 really prove because what we are trying to do uh, in a in a in a somewhat naive way is we are trying to do comparison of the layer by layer parameters and comparing it with the gold standard model and to see whether we are close enough to the gold standard model. But there are two problems with that. One is, as I said, there need not be one gold standard. Uh, in the parameter space, there could be another place where a perfectly forgotten model could exist and uh, which, is, which is far away from the gold standard. So is it, really necessary to compare to the gold standard and maybe it is not maybe there could be a completely independent way of trying to certify so you want to certify that the forgotten data is truly has been forgotten right and i'll give you an example part of my motivation was was done by my uh, was because of my student i had a student who was a facebook subscriber and uh, basically he for some reason he he said he wanted to get out from facebook so he actually told facebook delete my account okay and the facebook is supposed to have completely deleted the account i don't know whether it does machine unlearning or not but what happened is after 5 years he rejoined facebook and what he found that when it did the friends the friends recommendation the friends recommendation was very accurate, even though the amount of activity after rejoining was very little, which means that somehow the recommendation system within Facebook actually remembered his original data and therefore it could more accurate division. So your question is really pointing it out. How can you certify that it has been truly forgotten? I don't know the answer. Uh, I think this is a great uh, question, and I hope we can uh, get the answer someday. Thank you, thank you so much. So, uh, yeah, and actually, uh, the question related to the membership inference is actually also comes from uh, our group's PhD student. So uh -huh. he, he's, yes, Xin Tian, he's working on the membership inference attacks and uh, also uh, corresponding related uh, privacy and security issues. So my second question is that uh, actually in, in your, uh, I think, uh, uh, a general question. So, so from your perspective, uh, do you think the performance of uh, learning is actually related to the overfitting of the model? So for example, uh, in your first uh, uh, work, the first study, so you propose the faster and learning to unlearn a class. So for yes. example, if the model is quite overfitted for a certain class, and after we just uh, increase the, uh, I mean, the, uh, just uh, just uh, unlearn the certain class, would this be easier for the overfitted model? 
I, I think this is a great question. Again, I think there is a lot of interplay between overfitting. But you know, um, uh, okay, uh, let, let me digress first by saying uh, this is a very deep question about deep learning in general. Because mm -hmm. uh, the traditional thinking was if you have an overparameterized model, it basically memorizes the training data and does overfitting. But However, it has been found, and this has been found for uh, large uh, foundation models also. Actually, over parameterization improves generalization, which is very paradoxical. It it just just doesn't do overfitting. It actually improves the generalization. So, what is the interact interaction between overfitting and generalization? It is not very well understood. What we have found is that if you forget, if you forget class is very dissimilar to the other data which is from the retained class and if you forget that then the retain uh, uh, accuracy has uh, actually is 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 okay it's similar to the gold standard model but surprisingly if your forget class is somewhat similar so for example you have lions and tigers and and jaguars and panthers and you say forget panthers but you still have tigers and lions and which which belongs to the cat family then if you forget then actually in the machine unlearned model the retain set accuracy for tigers and 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 lions actually goes up because there is now less confusion with the panthers which is which is surprising and this interplay between uh, forgetting, generalization, and retain accuracy is something uh, is 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 a very interesting phenomenon to be explored. I don't know whether I answered your question or not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is very, it's very uh, also interesting. So I, I was thinking about it. So yeah. So I think that's all my answers. Thanks. Uh, yeah. So so uh, very to, much to give you, you give you another yeah, example. Yeah. Uh, if I have a machine learning model trained on all types of aircraft, so Airbus, Boeing, Bombardier, right? And then I say, forget the Boeing class. So if I show you uh, any Boeing aircraft, you should not be able to classify it anymore. But if I show you a Boeing aircraft, if your unlearned model says that this is a dog, then there is a problem, right? That means your generalization is poor. It's like saying, if I have a child who has been only shown Airbus aircraft, and if I shown a child and, and, and Boeing aircraft for the first time, the child will say Airbus aircraft because that's the closest thing. It will not say it's a dog, right? Mm -hmm. so, yeah. so when you unlearn, and then when you pose the unlearned class samples, what should be the correct output? Again, it's a very interesting question. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Thank you very much, Professor Mohan. Yeah. So I think that's all my questions. Yeah, so uh, I think there is a chat uh, question which says, how can we use sample generation idea for fairness machine? Great idea. I think I think this is something definitely we can do, the generator idea. Now, if you can know that your trading data actually uh, has not sampled the input space correctly, that means it has, there is biased training data, then maybe the generator can generate data which uh, corresponds to the distribution uh, much better. But then you have to bias your generator. It generates uh, uh, the, the part of the distribution which has not been sampled properly in the training data. I think there is scope for that. I have not done it. I don't know anybody who's done it, but I think that is, that is a great uh, use of that idea. Great, thank you. Do we have any more questions? Mm -hmm. I have one question. Sure. There's one more question in the chat. Hey is asking, can data positioning achieve the same goal of machine learning? I'm sorry, I don't uh, uh, know what is data positioning. Could you explain that to me? Or data poisoning? Oh, yes, maybe. Sorry. Yeah, I mean data poisoning. Sorry about yes. that. Yes. 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 Uh, yeah. Data. Data poisoning. Uh, I think data poisoning. Uh, if you poison with anti samples, I mean that is the whole idea, right? If you poison with anti samples, which precisely you can generate the poison data such that to. 
to to specifically targeting a subclass i think you could do that but i think the idea of data poisoning is actually to degrade the performance overall of the machine learning model so the the i think it could be repurposed for that but the intent usually is different exactly Okay, great, thank you. So uh, I had one more question about uh, your last method on learning with an incompetent teacher. I remember right. that you mentioned that you tested and realized that uh, it, if you, instead of uh, using randomized parameters or weights for the incompetent teacher, you tried and um, trained it partially and it put, the, the model performed better compared yes, to random sites. Yes. Do you have any intuitions behind this? Uh, no, actually in our paper, we have mentioned this, that uh, we, we, have, we have had this observation that the partially trained method actually works better. And, and frankly, we don't know why. Yeah, uh, and, and, and so, so it, I don't know. Maybe its output distribution is more similar to the uh, the original model to start with, and therefore uh, it it works better. Uh, we don't know actually, so we only have speculation. Uh, mm -hmm. So I think this this makes it very interesting because we can dig deep into many of these aspects and yeah. and and explore. And yeah. uh, I think I think uh, so. If you see the machine learning uh, literature, uh, literally it has exploded in the last year. Uh, it has. Uh, it was uh, very little uh, till uh, this thing. We started work about two and a half years ago, but suddenly a lot of people are picking up, and I think there is a lot of open problems. Uh, uh, yeah. uh, and 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 I think the kind the kind of question you ask, I think it, it intrigues us also. But I don't have an answer, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. um, we have another um, question in the chat. If you have the time to answer it. Oh yeah. So so I think this is this is I think very very interesting. What you are doing, what you are saying is at a higher level unlearning of a semantic class, like texture and colors and something. And uh, we haven't tried that, but that's an interesting question. So how do you do semantic learning? So, so uh, I do not, uh, well, I mean, you could do that, for example, uh, colors. So, so basically you want to forget textures, right? That means I have to give enough texture samples to do that. That is one way of doing it. But semantically, if I can get this concept and use some knowledge based method, can I do a knowledge unlearning? Because now it's purely data driven. But what you are really asking is at a slightly higher level, can you generalize this concept uh, from data into a higher level uh, concept? And can I learn uh, unlearn at a concept level? I think it's a great, great point. I had not thought of that. And uh, I, I, I don't know how to start uh, doing that. Maybe something like using uh, more symbolic AI, using knowledge graphs along with uh, machine learning. That is some of the work we are doing, combining symbolic AI with data-driven AI. And then uh, you forget from the, and then uh, you know fuse it with a data-driven approach. I don't know, maybe there is some scope there. Great question. Thank you. I had not thought of it. Thank you. <clears throat> Sorry. Thank you very much. Uh, do we have any more questions from the audience? I think you have covered all the questions. Thank you very much. Thank you all for joining us today. Thank you, Mohan, for accepting to present for us today. And thank you for the great uh, presentation. Uh, I think everyone has come up with uh, a lot of research questions and you gave us a lot of uh, insights for future research. Oh, thank you. Thank you. It was a pleasure. And, and that's what I think we are very excited about this area. And I see we see a lot of potential. So when you invited me to give the talk, I thought this is a good opportunity because not many people and uh, have come across this yet. That's what I'm finding. And sometimes when I talk about machine unlearning, people think it's a joke, right? On machine unlearning. <laughs> no, 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 it's not a joke. This is a serious research topic. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. That's how it makes sense. Thank you again. And... Uh, Thank you. I hope you have a great day. OK, thank you very much uh, to the audience and to you, uh, Masid, uh, for inviting me. Uh, it's been my pleasure.
Thank you very much, and you two we'll have a great day. in person next year. <laughs> yep. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.